praise God. You want to just lift your hands to the Lord, worship Him in your own way. God, we thank you so much. God, for the privilege of singing, of worshiping you tonight, Lord, for the privilege of just getting together again on Wednesday night, Lord. God, we worship and we praise and we exalt your name. It's the name that's above every other name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the name of the Lord. It's so good to see everyone in the house of the Lord tonight. I'm going to begin um, with prayer. We're just going to ask the Lord to bless, uh, to be with us. There's a host of needs. Um, I do ask you to continue to pray for uh, Charlotte Wagner. Ask the Lord to touch the need that's there. She's in the hospital right now. God has already touched, but we want him to continue that work that's there. I know you prayed uh, for Jimmy uh, this morning and throughout this day, and we're grateful for those prayers. Uh, my brother-in-law, Stephen, um, he's in our Facebook community group, and he's actually going for a heart procedure in the morning. So I do ask that you would uh, just pray for him, ask God to move in those needs. And I know that there are a host of needs that are here tonight. We want to pray for those. And then also, um, let's just ask God to talk to our hearts um, tonight. What I'm going to talk to you about tonight, it's going to be a part of a series that I'm doing with some um, other classmates that are part of our uh, of the class that I'm taking right now, and I'll post the links to their sermons if you want to watch them in our Facebook community group, and I know that the Lord will bless you. Let's pray for these needs and pray that God will talk to us tonight, and then we're going to read scripture, and then we're going to get into the word of the Lord, and then once we're uh, done, we'll pray like we usually do on Wednesday nights. Would you pray with me? Heavenly Father, thank you so much, God, for allowing us uh, to meet together again. God, we can feel the sweet presence of your spirit in here, and we're grateful for that. Lord, we're asking in your name, Lord, that you would touch these needs, these continual needs that we have lifted up before you uh, just over and over again. Lord, we want you to touch Charlotte Wagner. Lord, minister to her right where she's at in that hospital room. Thank you for keeping your hand on Jimmy through the surgery this morning, God. God, and we know, Lord God, that you're going to be with Stephen tomorrow as he goes through this procedure. We pray that you would keep your hand upon him, comfort him, bless him, strengthen him. Lord, all those related to our church that are experiencing grief right now, the, the funerals that, Lord God, have been here, we're asking for your covering and your grace and your strength. Lord, we're asking in your name that you would just touch every need that's present in this place tonight. Lord, and that you would speak to our hearts through the word of the Lord. And we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you for being here tonight. I'm reading tonight, um, and I know that there are a few of you that are helping me out, and I thank you for helping me out, um, critiquing my sermon, and I appreciate all the feedback that you gave me um, last week. Um, and so I'm reading from Matthew chapter number 5 tonight, Matthew chapter number 5, and beginning at verse number 11, Matthew chapter 5, verse number 11, and it reads, I'm reading from the New Revised Standard Version. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For in the same way they persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth, but if salt has lost its taste, how can its saltiness be restored? It is no longer good for anything, but is thrown out and trampled underfoot. You are the light of the world. A city built on a hill cannot be hid. No one, after lighting a lamp, puts it under the bushel basket, but on a lampstand, and it gives light to all in the house. In the same way, let your light shine before others so that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father in heaven. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you so much for standing so long. You can be seated. I'm going to talk to you on the topic tonight, like parent, like child. We've probably all heard it. Sometimes we've said it, um, like father, like son, like mother, like daughter. It's something that has been repeated down through the years and Actually, as I looked at it over many cultures, uh, many uh, different people groups, and this particular saying, what it says to us is oftentimes, whether it's nurture or nature, whether it's 
uh, genetics or training, whether it's the way we raised our children or just the way that they came out, so often when we look at a child, we can see imprints and impressions of their parents in them. Like parent, like child. In our text this evening, one of the things that it says at the very end is that when those that are around us in the world see our good works, that they will glorify our Father who is in heaven. Our Father, everybody said Father. This phrase, Heavenly Father, is repeated over and over again in the Gospel of Matthew, and in particular, it's repeated in the Sermon on the Mount. Jesus is continually going back to this idea that the disciples are a part of a kingdom over which God reigns, and they're not just uh, subjects in the kingdom, but they're actually children of the kingdom. He goes on and he says that those who are part of this kingdom, as he introduces it, are those who are happy. Somebody said happy. We often, in most of our English translations, even those contemporary ones, they translate that word blessed or blessed in that way. But who even knows what blessed means? Oftentimes we just say, I hope you're blessed. I want you to be blessed. But at its root, this word blessed, and some translations just translate it happy. Happy. The only way, the old song says, the only way to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. The way the Sermon on the Mount begins is telling us, you know what? You can be happy. And this happiness, it doesn't necessarily depend on what a the people of the world think that it should depend on, but it depends on these principles upon which you build your life when God is your Father. Those Beatitudes that we call them that are right before our text and that give us the background for this text, blessed are the poor in spirit and blessed are uh, the, those who mourn and blessed are the meek or happy are the poor in spirit or happy are those who mourn or happy are the meek or happy are those who hunger and thirst after righteousness for they will be filled. Happy are the merciful for they will obtain mercy. Happy are the pure in heart for they are the ones that will see God. Happy are the peacemakers for they will be called the children of God. And then happy are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake. And then our text picks up in verse number 11, and it just begins to play out those internal attitudes. Somebody said attitude. It plays out those internal attitudes, and it says these internal attitudes and these these ways of thinking about life, they lead to happiness, and they lead to good works. And those good works produce happiness in the here and in the hereafter. I think Christians ought to be the happiest people that there are. When I think about God, I I think about God smiling. He smiles on us each and every day when we wake up and the sun shines on us. He smiles on us when we've been going through a drought and difficulty and the grass has been dying and uh, the the, the, uh, tomato plants are shriveling up and then the next thing you know, uh, he pours out the rain on us. He's smiling. God is a God who delights the Bible says, and giving us the kingdom. God is a God who pours out blessings upon us daily. The writer said that he daily loads us with benefits. We ought to be happy. There ought to be an internal attitude that makes us look different to the world around us. Jesus talks about two different things when he describes the difference that we ought to be able to portray in the world around us. He mentions salt and light, salt and light. He says, you're the salt. You're the salt. You're the salt of the world. You're the light of the world. You know, we're called to both. Somebody said both. Both personal holiness and, somebody said and, contact with the world. 
I like what one writer said, one preacher said. He said, you know, salt can only affect what it touches. God isn't calling us, and Jesus isn't calling us in this text to be hidden away somewhere where nobody sees, to just allow our life of doing the good works that we do just to cause us uh, to be a picture of personal piety where someone looks from the outside and they said, wow, that's a really good person, and look at them. They are so righteous. That's not what Jesus is calling us to. At the end of his text, he says, when they see the way you live, when your salt is giving flavor and preservation and, and when your salt is, is doing its job and when your light is shining as God wants it to, they'll see your heavenly Father. They won't see you. They'll see your heavenly Father. And they'll give glory because of your good works. You can't influence what you're not in contact with. Our responses, and this is what I thought about as I studied and prayed over this sermon, our, our responses should be different from the world's responses to life. You know, oftentimes when people face the things that these Beatitudes talk about, they don't find true blessedness and happiness. Those moments when we face difficulties that cause us to feel that poverty in spirit or those moments that wound us and we feel that deep mourning or those moments when we just uh, approach life different from everyone else that's raging and, and arguing and filling up their Facebook feeds with just all kinds of just rhetoric that is uh, destructive, but we come into it and we just have a gentle answer, blessed are the meek. When we have that place where we're hungering and thirsting after righteousness, some of these things, the world wouldn't look from the outside and say, man, that really ought to, uh, that, that, that ought to make you happy doing that. But Jesus says, oh, no. There comes a blessing when you can look at life and say, you know what? I, I'm different from everyone else. Along with that difference comes, Jesus said, blessed are those when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Now, as I thought about this, I thought about those people that might hear this sermon and say, you know what, I'm going to go stir up something. And some people like to stir things up, don't they? They like to post things on their Facebook feed or Instagram, and they like to post those things that are the most controversial things that they could possibly uh, uh, talk about. And then when someone says something to them about it, then automatically it's, I'm being persecuted. Somebody's coming against me for what I did. I don't think that's what Jesus is talking about here. He's talking about when we live in such a way that we live and move in our community, when we become the salt that uh, gives preservation and gives flavor and gives distinctiveness to the world around us, we show up where everybody else is. And the light, when we begin to shine, and light has a way of shining into the world around us. And oh yeah, light can expose some things, can it? But light can also say, hey, this is an error that we need to work on. Sometimes people don't like that. And it's in those moments when we're living meek and righteous and we're doing things out of love and we're trying to be the salt. We care about our community. We're trying to be that light. We're exposing injustice. We're trying to do things the right way that someone might come against us. And when they do, Jesus said, that's the time you ought to rejoice. That's how they treated the prophets. He doesn't want us to lose that. God wants us to keep our distinctiveness. And that distinctiveness sometimes is not all the things that we think it is, but it's our attitudes and our thoughts and our reactions. Praise God. God is good. Let's pray. Lord, we love you. We thank you so much for your goodness and kindness and mercy toward us. Lord, we thank you for being gracious to us tonight, and we thank you for listening to us, Lord, in Jesus' name.